Hi, my name is Daniel Rogi, and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, conversational programming in Pathpilot for the Slant Pro Lathe. Um, and what I'm going to do is give you a brief overview of the conversational screens, and then I'll talk to you about a, the, a few of the ways in Pathpilot that we check to make sure the values that you enter make sense. There's uh, front tool post programming, rear tool post programming, different tool orientations, and, and Pathpilot tries to uh, double check your work, make sure that uh, you're not going to have any crashes or collisions. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you're probably familiar with the interface. I'll page over here to the conversational screens and we'll do a brief rundown of everything that's available here. You'll notice on the left side we have um, some digital readouts, DROs, that are common to every operation. So a title can be whatever we put in there, uh, OD, turn, uh, work offset is G54 through G59.3. Roughing surface feet per minute would be uh, how fast we're going to be spinning the spindle speed. Um, you'll notice on a lathe we typically program in constant surface speed, not in RPM mode. So the surface feet per minute setting here, or meters per minute in uh, metric mode, uh, that reflects actually the velocity that the exterior of the workpiece travels as you're making the cut. We have a roughing setting for that and a finishing setting for that. Uh, we also have uh, a maximum spindle RPM. So if you have a, a large chuck, large workpiece on there, you probably want to clip that to uh, the highest amount you're comfortable with. It might be less than the maximum speed of the machine. Followed by uh, your inches per revolution. That's kind of analogous to your feed rate. Uh, on a mill, you think of feed rate in terms of uh, 10 inches per minute, 40 inches per minute. But on a lathe, you typically think about it as inches per revolution of the workpiece. So those values are typically things like um, 10 thousandths per rev or 5 thousandths per rev. And we have a roughing setting and a finishing setting for that. So these are common to all the uh, different routines. And then we have specific values uh, that relate to the geometry of the part you're trying to produce. So we'll dive into this first tab. This is the OD turn tab. This is used for turning a diameter. You'll see common stuff, the tool number we're using, um, the Z start, the Z end, the X, that's the diameter, and the final X. These are all diameter values, not uh, radius values. And then a few other things. These are going to be self-explanatory based on the uh, little pictogram here. We have the roughing depth of cut, the finished depth of cut, and uh, tool clearance. That's going to be how far away from the uh, workpiece the tool will move in between cuts. And a couple things to point out here. We'll go ahead, and if I hit enter on any of these values, they page through, which is nice. Takes you to the next one. And the other thing that hitting enter on these values does is if I enter something in here that's nonsensical, it flags it as an error right away. So I always encourage people uh, to use enter to skip between the fields, even though you could type something in here and then type something in here. Enter kind of double checks your work, and it's a little faster. So there's OD turn. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to be turning um, a workpiece down to a set diameter, uh, starting from an initial diameter. Next here is ID turn. This is going to be turning um, an internal feature of the part, so creating a, a finished bore. And we have two settings for this tab. Uh, we have a basic, which is just going from a pilot hole. You have a pilot drill hole. And then we're going to be uh, just turning the, uh, the inner diameter of that bore. We also have an extended tab. And this extended tab will come and it'll finish the face. If you look at the pictogram, it'll show you not only does it cut the inner diameter, but it'll cut the inner face as well. And I won't go through all the different fields on here. They're very similar um, to the fields on OD turn, and they're all documented in the manual. We'll go ahead and take a look at face. This is just another one facing off the end of a part. Uh, one small thing to note here is that you can actually Pick a final X dimension. This would be if you're facing a tube. You maybe don't want to go all the way to the center line of the, uh, of the workpiece. You just want to face a small amount that you could set that final diameter to something. Say if your idea of your tube is half an inch, you, do, you wouldn't have to travel that last inch. Half inch, you could just put 0.5 in the final X. Chamfer. <clears throat> we have a number of different options for chamfer. You can cut a chamfer on the end of your part. That could be an OD chamfer or an ID chamfer, so an internal chamfer. Um, similar to chamfer, we have radius. So it'll put a nice curve, uh, you know, circular arc on the end of your part. And once again, we have an ID as well as an OD option for that. Um, groove and part tab. 
this would be uh, the part version of it is for parting off a workpiece, and uh, pictogram explains most of these values. Um, and uh, we also do a, a, a grooving routine, so you could create a, a long groove for an O-ring or, or featuring the part. It can all be done conversationally. Uh, one quick thing to note on the part is a lot of times when you part your piece off, you don't want that burr that's formed on the workpiece. So we do have an edge break utility. If you enter in some small value here for edge break, it'll put a tiny little chamfer on the back side of your part before it parts it off. It's a pretty convenient little method to avoid having to deburr your part when you're done. Drill and tap, um, similar stuff. You'll notice here on drill and tap, we typically don't program in surface feet per minute for a drill because the drill is going to be on center line. Uh, so we're just programming in RPM mode. That means that a few of these things are going to be grayed out over on this side. I can no longer enter a surface foot value in here because I'm going to be programming based on RPM. <clears throat> so spindle RPM is going to give me that value. Um, similar with tap. We don't do a, a CSS, constant surface speed, and tap because you're on spindle center line with the tool. Uh, so we program in RPM. Uh, and I'd like to point out something with the tap page in particular. Obviously, the pitch and the threads per inch are mutually exclusive. So if I put in 20 for threads per inch, you'll notice the pitch will change to 0.05. And that's just uh, the nature of the beast there. You can, you can enter in 0.05 if you happen to know the pitch. In fact, if you're programming metric threads in G21, more commonly, you know the thread by the pitch, so an M8 by one millimeter pitch, as opposed to um, imperial fasteners are typically specified by the uh, threads, threads per inch, so a quarter 20 is 20 threads per inch. Um, you can enter the value in either one of these, and it'll populate the other DRO, which is kind of handy. Lastly, we get to the thread page. <coughs> you can do an external or an internal thread on this page. Um, and one thing that's worth pointing out is this thread drop-down chart. So here we have a number of commonly used values. We could pick from this uh, thread chart um, any number of common thread values. So right now you're seeing imperial units like quarter 20, but um, if you were in G21 metric programming, you'd see a list of common metric thread options. And the values that uh, populate this table, when I select one of these, you'll notice it blows in threads per inch, It'll bring in the, uh, the uh, X start, which is the major diameter, and the X end, which is the minor diameter. All that, those numbers are brought in from Machinery's Handbook. And um, the table from which that information is drawn is actually user editable. So if you, if you find that you need some oddball Whitworth thread that's not in our dropdown, you can go ahead and enter those values in, and then you'll be able to select it just like you could select any other thread. Um, there's, of course, an internal uh, threading uh, option as well. And then the, the only other thing I wanted to point out here, similar to drill tap where you can enter in um, the uh, pitch and have the threads per inch will automatically populate. Here, you can either specify the depth of cut or you can specify the number of passes. And what's interesting about depth of cut, we use constant uh, area digression, which means as the tool takes a bite out of the workpiece, as you can imagine, a triangular shaped point going into workpiece, it's going to take considerably more material as you go deeper and deeper. So we don't always make the same depth of cut on every pass. We actually decrease the depth of cut to maintain a constant area of the chip. And that can make determining how many passes you're going to get by specifying an initial depth of cut pretty difficult. So if you're the type of machinist who thinks, oh, I should be able to cut that in eight passes, all you have to do is go down to the number of passes thing, enter in eight and it will automatically change the depth of cut. So <clears throat> real quickly here, when you're uh, done entering your values on any one of these screens, there's a couple different ways that you can actually create the G-code. So uh, option one would be um, you like the values you see, you go ahead and go in here, post a file. Then you can choose whatever folder you want this to be in. Maybe I'll choose conversational video, and I'll call it odturn.nc. Sure, we'll save it. And then that automatically loads it and it brings up the toolpath display. You can have a look, see if this was about what you expected. Um, if you want, you can even go to finer grid size to really give you an idea. <coughs> the other way to do this would be um, to append this to a file. So we could go here on this face routine and I could say, you know what, I really want to face the thing off um, after I turn the diameter on it. So we could go back and append a file. We'll, we'll go ahead and append this to the od turn file. 
And now I have something that does the OD turn, and then it faces it off. And that's the typical way that you stack these up. So that's a brief overview of the conversational tab. I'm quickly going to run, uh, run you through some of the things you might encounter here uh, as you're programming here. The first thing I want to point out is um, this lathe can be set up for um, rear tool post tooling, which is normal. This is if you had a turret. So all your tools are mounted on the opposite side of the spindle of the operator. But you can also set it up for front tool post tooling, which would be using uh, like a quick change tool post mounted on the operator side of the spindle. And you can program, uh, or you can set the lathe up for gang tooling, in which case you're likely to have tools that approach the workpiece from the front or tools that approach the workpiece from the back, from the, uh, from the side of the spindle opposite the operator. What's important to point out is if you're using a rear tool post tool, all your x diameter values are going to be positive. If I place a one inch bar in the spindle here, what I'm going to find here is that this side here, that's going to be an x dimension of one inch. But if I approach it from this side, that's an x dimension of minus one inch. So front tool post tools, all diameters are negative. I know that sounds a little odd to you geometry folks out there. Uh, front, uh, rear tool post tools, all, dia all diameters will be positive. So let's see how we check that <coughs> in conversational. So you'll notice here uh, we've been using um, uh, over here on the offset screen, we we're looking at tool two. And tool two is a rear tool post tool. So all diameter values should be positive, as we were just discussing. Uh, let's go ahead and try using, say, um, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to arbitrarily choose tool 22. And I'll tell the system that it's a front tool post uh, turning tool. And we'll go ahead and conversational. And I'll say OD turn. Let's say we want to use tool 22 for this. And I try to post this to file. I'm going to get an error. And the error says, hey, OD entry error, you've got a tool orientation problem. You wrote the code assuming we'd have tool orientation 2. But tool 22 here has tool or orientation 3. And that's just a double check to try to make sure that um, the tool that you've touched off is the correct tool for the job. And, um, if you get that mixed up, or if you're just starting programming, you have a front tool post uh, lathe, um, this is just a way to remind you negative diameters for front tool post tools, positive di diameters for rear tool post tools. And it's really helpful sometimes when you're over, and, and it'll highlight which things uh, were a mismatch here. Um, and it's very helpful, uh, I find, on some of the ID turn stuff. So we clear this up just by choosing some appropriate values. Thank you very much for watching our video uh, on conversational lathe programming. Please uh, check out our latest videos here. And for more metalworking tips, tricks, and stories, subscribe to our YouTube channel here.